Hey there, welcome to the YouTube channel. I pray that this message encourages you and it helps you grow and become more like Jesus. And make sure you hit the subscribe button so you can continue to grow and learn more. Enjoy. I've changed things up this year for uh, the um, uh, theme for, you know how you say Happy New Year's? Well, I've been telling everybody Happy Victory New Year, New Year. Happy Victory New Year's. Say it with me. Happy Victory New Year's. I'm believing God for an awesome year of great things to happen. Listen, I'm not in this pulpit anymore like I used to be, but I have not changed from who I am. And I believe that God's got some awesome things in store for his people this year across the country, across the world. I really do. And I'm hoping that today's message will be like a theme for you. You know how everybody has to have those New Year's resolutions. And there's nothing wrong with New Year's resolutions as long as you keep them. I've got a hold of something for us today I hope will be something we can keep all year long as a theme. So I'm not going for the New Year's resolution. I'm going for the New Year's theme for how we can take a look at how we're going to face the future. I've entitled the message today, The Power of One. The Power of One. And that one is a capital O. So you know who I'm talking about, don't you? Well, the power of God. So I, I want to take a moment today and introduce you to God, if I may. I'd like to introduce you to who he is, to remind us, to just get a little refresher course here, on who God is. If you remember the time when Moses was being raised up and used by God to go into the land of Egypt and bring them out of the bondage, if you recall, Moses asked God, well, who do I say has sent me? If I'm supposed to go out and take your people out of the land of Egypt, and I'm supposed to talk to Pharaoh, the top man, the head honcho, as they say, what am I supposed to say? Who do I say sent me? And what did God say? He said, I am that I am has sent you. I am that I am has sent you. Now, <clears throat> who is this I am that I am? So I have a chart for you this morning, and I'd like to help guide you through this chart just for a moment. And uh, I, I put it together to give us an idea of a simple, basic idea of who God is. Of course, we believe that the foundation, and those of you that are online, you aren't seeing my laser pointer, but the, the bottom of the word God here is holy, and it's the foundation, because the Bible says that God is holy, and that's his foundation. God is holy. Then we learn that God is on the left, God is powerful, which means he's, he's omnipotent, which means he's powerful. He's on the top, he's omniscient, which means knowing, and he is omnipresent, which means he's everywhere. And overall, he is sovereign, which is his will. So you don't have to remember these big words. You just have to remember that God is powerful, knowing he's everywhere, and his will will be done because he is a holy God. And if it, you will be able to go online and get this little chart I put together, that will give you a, a reminder throughout the year of who God is. You know, Isaiah 45, 5 says, I am the Lord, and there is no other Apart from me, there is no God. Let me say that again. I am the Lord, and there is no other. Apart from me, there is no God. So I'm going to give our takeaway very early in the message today. One of our takeaways. Here we go. Three phrases you need to remember in 2022. Three very simple phrases. Number one, God is. Number two, God does show up. God shows up. And number three, God works. He is, he shows up, and he works. Now, <clears throat> we all wonder what will happen this year. Look what has happened in this past year. It's not anything unusual for us to sit and think, I wonder what will happen this year. We have, I imagine you've already maybe thought that way. It's okay. That's very normal. It's very natural. In fact, it's a good idea. 
to ask that question. I wonder what's going to happen this year. But what we really know for sure that God already, say already, God already knows. That's important. I hope that you will allow this to be encouraging to you today. God already knows what's going to happen in 2022. Do you know that God already knew what was going to happen in 2022 before the earth was even created? He already knew what was going to happen in 2000 because he's all-knowing. This is why I want us to understand, again, the definition of who God is. He's all-knowing, so he's already known from the beginning of time. What did David say? Before a word was on my tongue, O Lord, you knew it. Remember Psalms 139? Before a word is on my tongue, O Lord, you knew it. So be, before you and I were even created and even brought from our mother's wounds, he already knew we would be here today, hearing this message. He already knew that. And so God already knows what's going to happen this year. We do not have to question what is going to happen in the world, although we do question what in the world is happening. <laughs> <laughs> that's strange we don't have to worry about what's going to happen but we do ask the question but what in the world is going on Lord there's a lot of questions here Lord we don't understand some things Lord and I hope to help us by the end of this message even about our prayers and here's a question I'm going to throw out at the end why are we praying if he already knows everything that's going to happen why are we praying think about it Think about it. Why do we pray? Why are we here? If, why can't we just stay home and just do our thing if he already knows what's going to happen? Because it won't stop being what it was already going to be. Did I open your thinking here a little bit? Why am I praying? Why am I here today? Okay. So I'll tell you what is going on, though. If you really want to know what's going on, I, I do have that answer. And you do, too if you're reading your Bible. And the answer is very simple. As we speak right now, Scripture is being fulfilled in our world right now. Scripture is being fulfilled in America. If you are reading your Bible and you're staying updated with what the Bible says, I want to assure you right now, Scripture is being fulfilled. God is not absent. God is not forgotten us. God is not sleeping. God is not off somewhere else taking care of another problem in another part of the world. God is. God is showing up. And God is working because Scripture is currently being very fulfilled in America right now. But you won't know that if you're not reading your Bible. How do you know what's going on in the world? Because you listen to a news station. How do you know what's going on in the world? Because you read the newspaper. Well, how in the world do you know what's going on in the world? Unless you read the Bible. Listen to the news. Read your papers. Read your magazines. Listen to your radio stations. But honey, if you're not reading the Bible, you won't really know what's going on in this world. Because that is the most accurate news there is. The Bible is the most accurate news of what's going on in this world. Read your Bible and you won't need all that stuff on TV and you won't need to read all those newspapers and you won't need to read all those radio stations because, listen to them, I mean, because if you're reading the Bible, you will know what's going on. So get in your Bible and start reading it because it'll tell you what's going on today, right now. God is, God is showing up. And God is working. Remember, he neither slumbers nor sleeps. I want to share with you a couple Bible stories. The first one is in 1 Samuel chapter 5. This will be online for you sometime this coming week. 1 Samuel chapter 5, verses 1 through 12. And here's how it says. After the Philistines had captured the ark of God, they took from it Ebenezer to Ashdod. Ashdod, Ashdod excuse me. Then they carried the ark into Dagon's temple and set it beside Dagon. When the people of Ashdod rose early the next day, there was Dagon, fallen on his face on the ground before the ark of the Lord. And they took Dagon and put him back up on his place. But the following morning when they rose, there was Dagon, fallen on his face on the ground before the ark of the Lord. His head and hands had been broken off and were lying on the threshold, only his body remained. The Lord's hand was heavy on the people of Ashdod and its uh, vicinity. 
He brought devastation on them and inflicted them with tumors. When the people of Ashdod saw what was happening, they said, the ark of the God of Israel must stay here with us. Be, uh, uh, must not stay here with us because the hand is heavy, his hand is heavy on us, on Dagon, our God. His hand is heavy on Dagon, our God. So they called together all the rulers of the Philistines and asked them, what shall we do with the ark of the God of Israel? So what had happened was there was a battle between the Israelites and the Philistines, and the Philistines won, and they stole the ark of God. That's what this is about. So they put it in their temple, the temple of Dagon, as having captured the ark of God. They answered, have the ark of God of Israel moved to Gath. So they moved the ark of God to Gath, of Israel to Gath. But after they had moved it, the Lord's hand was heavy against that city, thrown it into a great panic. He afflicted the people of the city, both young and old, with an outbreak of tumors. So they sent the ark of God to Ekron. As the ark of Ekron entered, uh, entered Ekron, the ark of God entered Ekron, the people of Ekron cried out, they have brought the ark of God of Israel around to us to kill us and our people. So they called together all the rulers of the Philistines and said, send the ark of the God of Israel away, let it go back to its own place, or it will kill us and our people. For death, listen to this, these are very important words. For death, have filled the city with panic. God's hand was heavy upon it. Those who did not dare die were afflicted with tumors, and the outcry of the city went up to heaven. Now, notice how God's presence was dealing with those who did not believe in God in those days. Now, we need to imagine something here today. Imagine the presence and the power emanating from God was so powerful, was so strong, that the God of Dagon could not stand beside him. But wait a minute. Didn't we just read that there is no other God beside me? In Isaiah? Wait a minute. There was no prayer meetings going on. There was no search going on for the ark of God at this time. God was all by himself where he was put. He was all by himself, and it was just God. Just God. You know what this is? This is the power of one. That there's so much power, because he's omnipotent. There's so much power and presence in him, that while there was no one around, no one, no prayer meetings, no search parties, nothing, just God himself. And the God of Dagon could not even stand against that. That's who you're serving today. That's the power of the one you are serving today. The power of one. His powers and presence was so devastating wherever he went. And do you not think that that's not working right now around the world? I got news for you. God is. God has shown up all around the world. And God is working. That's why we can have what's called a happy victory new year because God is working in America. You may not see it. You may not be thinking that way, but he is because he never slumbers nor sleeps. All by himself, God did this. Now, let's go to another story in 2 Kings chapter 6. I want to read some of part of that chapter. It was kind of common in Bible days that the prophets of God would be used of God supernaturally to speak a word. I call it also the word of knowledge at work through a gift of prophecy, where a prophet could be in another part of the world, but they would speak things that would come out to be the truth in the, the, for the future. They, they would 
They, would, they were actually used to help in battle plans in Bible days. So kings would inquire of the prophets, you know, what's going to happen? Should we go and fight? And they would use the prophets of God, would speak a word supernaturally to them and, and could tell them what to do, what to expect. So I want to kind of, you have that in your mind as we pick up on this this morning. Now, the king of Aram was at war with Israel. After confirming with his officers, he said, I will set up my camp in such and such a place. And the man of God sent word to the king of Israel, beware of passing. See, here's that word coming to the king, coming forth supernaturally. Beware of passing that place because the Arameans are going down there. So the king of Israel checked on the place indicated by the man of God. Time and again, Elisha warned the king. This is the prophet Elisha doing his supernatural work so that he, he was on guard in such places. He was just doing his job as God was leading him. This enraged the king of Aram. He summoned his officers and demanded to them, Tell me, which of us is on the side of the king of Israel? None of us, my lord, the king, said one of his officers. But Elisha, the prophet who is in Israel, tells the king of Israel the very words you speak in your bedroom. That's the gift of the word of knowledge you've been hearing preached about recently. It's a prophetic word through what's called the gift of knowledge, working with also the word of wisdom, given him imparting wisdom through a knowledge that he could have never known had God not shown him through a prophetic word. There's those three gifts of the Spirit working in the Old Testament. Go find out where he is, the king ordered, so I can send men and capture him. The report came back. He's in Dothan. Then he sent horses and chariots and a strong force there. They went by night and surrounded the city. When the servant of the man of God got up and went out early the next morning, an army with horses and chariots had surrounded the city. Oh, no, my Lord, what shall we do? The servant asked. Don't be afraid, the prophet answered. Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Let that be a takeaway for you this year. Let me read that again. Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Listen to me. I don't care what comes down the pike in this country. We have more on our side than they do. We have more on our side, folks, than they do. Because God is, because God will show up, and because God will work. You don't mess with God's people. You don't mess with God's people and get away with it. We just don't know the timing. We just know it won't be able to happen. You will not be able to mess with God's people. Never have, never will. That's why the church 2,000 years later is still on the grow. Because you can't stop the move of God. Why? Because God is, because God shows up, and because God will work. And he's proved it. And Elisha prayed, open his eyes, Lord, so that he may see. Then the Lord opened the servant's eyes, and he looked and saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? Totally surrounded. As the enemy came down toward him, Elisha prayed to the Lord, strike this army with blindness. So he struck them with blindness, and Elisha, as Elisha had asked. And the story goes on how he fed those soldiers, sent them back home to their hometown. Instead of the, the servant thought we should de, de, get, away, you know, deal, get, get rid of them. No, let's feed them and just send them back home. He's, you read the story, he goes on and sends them back home. But this is where God showed up. Here's Elisha. Here's this, here's this servant to Elisha. He doesn't know. He opens his eyes. He sees what's going on in the, around him. We open our eyes today and we see what's going on around in the world. But at the same type, token, if we'll just open up the spiritual eyes and as God opened up my spiritual eyes, Lord, open up my spiritual eyes, Lord, open up my understanding, Lord, open up my mind, Lord, we're going to see that God has surrounded our country. He surrounded this world. God is here. God is, God shows up, and God is working. But we do need to pray, Lord, open up my eyes. You know one of the prayers I pray often? Okay, and I have a lot of time to pray these days because, you know, you sit in dialysis, you, I, I pray, I'm praying. It's, it's so cute when the nurses walk up to me, Pastor Coon, Pastor Coon, they think I'm sleeping. 
And I'm praying. Now, sometimes I do fall asleep. You know, if I didn't get, you know, don't get me wrong. There are times I fall asleep because I didn't get as much sleep the night before. So I will do a little snooze once in a while. But most of the time, I've got my eyes closed. I'm praying. I'm praying. My mask is on. They don't have to think I'm talking to myself and I'm insane because my mask is on. It's a win-win. But I, I, I want to tell you something, folks. I pray. Here's how I pray. Lord, open, take the blinders off our eyes. Take the blinders off the eyes of the unbeliever. For Satan has blinded their eyes. Lord, remove those blinders. Lord, take off the blinders in our eyes. Let's make sure there's no blinders in our eyes, Lord. Let's not be praying for something for somebody else, but, but we say, Lord, don't take off any blinders I may have too. Take them off. We want to see God. And here's my question. And you're not going to maybe like this question real well at first. But do we need to worry so much about things? I, I know that's a tough thing to say. Because, say, Pastor, do take the blinders off your eyes. Take a look what's going on. What do you mean we don't have to worry about things? But the, the key statement here is worry. Do we need to worry so much about things? And here's why I say this. If God is, and he is, then God will show up because he is omnipotent. Remember? He's everywhere. If God is, then God will show up because he is omniscient, which means he does know how to fix things. If God is, then God will show up because God is omnipotent. That means he's all-powerful to handle the circumstances we go through. And if God is, then God will show up in all this with his will being done because he's sovereign. His will will be done because he's sovereign. Which brings me to my final point. That power, that power of one lives in us today, right now, this very moment. As you sit here today, this power of one is in us right now, this moment. I'm here, I can help, so I, I, I can help the needy, I can feed the hungry, I can pray, I can do, I, I do drive-bys all the time. I, I try to pray for stuff all the time when I go by it. When I drive by a school, I pray for the people in the school. When I, when I drive by the police station, I pray for the troopers. When I drive by any, I, I try to pray for, I call it drive prayer drive-bys. You know, there's, there's, a, there's a certain drive-by you and have in some of these cities, you know, those kind of drive-bys. But I have what's called a spiritual drive-by. Lord, be with these people. Lord, open these eyes. Lord, protect the minds of our kids in school today. I pray all kinds of things. I just, I do prayer drive-bys. I'm trying to pray. I, I, I take advantage of my time in the car. There's things we could do. There's so many things that we could do. I was going to put a bag, a seed bag together, and I was going to pull out all these seeds of everything. We can go out and throw seeds in the community. And I just, I, I thought, well, that would just take so much time. I have more to say than doing that illustration. But I want you to think in terms of all the opportunities that are around us that we have when we leave this place today. There are opportunities galore to drop a seed. Drop a spiritual seed so God has something to water it. So God has something to water. And when he waters it, it will sprout. But we got to put the seed out there, church. It, 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 <clears throat> I think sometimes we think that if I'm not telling someone about how to get saved, that, that we're not, there's nothing to do. No, every little thing we do is what helps get people to the point of wanting to be saved. You understand? So when you do help the poor and the needy, and they remember that, and happen to walk in the church one day and say, I remember that guy, he gave me 20 bucks. When I was hungry. Folks, I can't begin to tell you the chain reaction that could happen, that God could use, and that God could do. A huge, huge, huge chain reaction that God could give us if we would just throw out the seeds. They're glory. Don't hang on to your seeds. If you will give your seeds away, God will replace your seeds in your life. And everyone said. So what we need to do is we need to obey the word of God and go and make disciples of all nations. 
baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. So when we do make disciples this year, we will find out that God is, that God will show up, and God will work his presence and his power through us. Through us. God never intended that he be all by himself all the time. <laughs> He never did that. You know, there, there is a uh, saying that used to go around in t- uh, that went like this by a great, 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 great man of God, a great author on the subject of prayer. Great author. Don't get me wrong. Tremendous. I don't remember who the quote came from. I just remember he was a great man of God in, in past history. But he made a statement one time, and it was this. God does nothing but an answer to prayer. And I... I i I got to be honest with you, I wrestled with that for years until I finally came to the conclusion after studying the Word of God over the years, I finally had come to the conclusion that's not true. That's the one statement I didn't agree with in his book. I I couldn't agree with that. I I had to set that aside. I didn't set aside those other teachings, boy, but I did set aside that statement. Because God did what he did in that Temple of Dagon all by himself. God showed up for that servant when that servant didn't ask God to show up and show him the host that was around the enemy. When the parents were taking a young man out of the city of Nain to the graveside and Jesus happened to come along their path, they didn't ask Jesus to touch that boy. They didn't ask Jesus to raise him from the dead. Jesus took the initiative and he raised him from the dead and that wasn't because of anyone's prayer. Jesus just did it on his own. I believe God is capable of working and operating on his own. In fact, I got news for you. Honey, I think God's doing stuff behind the scene, doing things against the enemy we have no clue of. And it isn't because we had anything to do with it. I do believe God answers prayer. Don't, don't think I don't believe that because I'll show you why I believe that in just a moment. But I'm, I'm simply saying to you that I, I can't accept that God does nothing in this prayer because God does all kinds of things without anybody even knowing, without anybody praying. I'm glad he does that. Because that's his sovereignty at work. That's his will at work. Because he's showing up, he's working, and he's doing his job. Here's what I'm going to say to you as we near our conclusion. We are not going to make it without him. Ladies and gentlemen, we're not going to make it to the end without God. He's the creator. He's always existed. He's never had a beginning. He's always existed. Try to figure that one out. When you got it figured out, let me know. And know this, that he's always been, he is, and always will be. There'll never be an ending. Never start. Never, it's like a circle. Where do you start the circle? It's never a beginning, never an ending. He's always there. He always will be, and he will always show up, and he will always work. That will always be the case. So that means that if he started this earth, created it, and he is in this earth, keeping it functioning, then he's going to be with this earth as it disappears, and the new ones come. Oh, yeah, this is all going to disappear. I said to God one day, Lord, how in the world are you going to... I've been out in Colorado. Lord, how in the world how in the world are you going to take away this beautiful place? And it's going to be more beautiful. I can't imagine what the new heavens and the new earth are going to look like. Can you imagine that? With all the beauty we have in our world? It's amazing. So in closing, if God is, and God will show up, and God would work, then why pray? Remember I challenged you with that? Why not just live life and let God do his thing? Now listen to Philippians 4, 6, and 7. I do not believe, I'll make sure that's in the, it's not up here today, but I will make sure that it's in the online this coming week. Listen to this very carefully. This is beautiful. Don't worry about anything. So I'm answering that question to you I asked earlier. Why do we worry about things? Well, the Bible says, don't worry about anything. Instead, say instead, instead, pray about everything. Hmm. There's your answer to the question, why pray? Because he said to pray. That's got to be a reason why he said to pray. If he already knows what's going to happen. It's got to be a reason why we pray. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. We had a beautiful Christmas gift from the Lord this year. Our entire 
family, even from Colorado. Hi, kids. They're on the road back right now to Colorado Springs this morning. God gave us a one. We, we, we concluded together as our family. All of our family were together for Christmas this year. We concluded that God gave us a Christmas gift that we could all be together for Christmas. And that was a wonderful gift for us as a family because we miss our kids out in Colorado Springs and, and, and thank God for the kids we have here in, in Dover area. But we miss everybody and we were able to be together. And we were thanking God for all he had done. We spent time in prayer. On New Year's Eve, we, we had a little prayer meeting before we celebrated the new year. And in the prayer, we said, Lord, thank you for all you've done this past year. He's been so good. Then he says, then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and mind. Oh, uh, you got to get a hold of Philippians 4, 6, and 7 and make it your verses this year, folks. It's so powerful. Why worry about anything? Just pray and leave it to me. I'll take care of it. You know, you've heard me say before, God collects all of our prayers, all of them. And then he decides what he's going to do with them. But he collects them because he said to do it. So here's what I'm saying. God knew from beginning of time what would happen. He's omniscient. We don't. So God asks us to pray, and he takes our prayers, and he builds them into his will. He takes all of our prayers, and he builds them to his will to be done. You see, the secret is God knew ahead of time what we were going to pray. So God knew ahead of time to take those prayers and let his will be done on those prayers that we're going to pray. And the reason that he does it is because while he knows what we're going to pray in the future, for in the days ahead, we don't know what he's going to do in the days. Only God knows what's going to happen. He who foreknows foreordains, Romans says. He who foreknows ordains it to be. Because he foreknows it, he and foreknew it, he ordains it to be. We didn't know, so our prayers helped to shape what his will would be for our lives. That's why we keep praying, because we didn't know the future. But when we pray, then God has already answered those prayers to the future that he knew we were going to pray. So don't walk out of here with the attitude, why pray? Well, number one, to be obedient to the word, because your prayers have been already heard by God before they're prayed, and he's already built his will in answer to those prayers. We won't know that until we pray. So we need to pray. Remember, he is the power of what? One. God needs nothing for his nature. Listen to that. God needs nothing for his nature because he's complete. Now, I love to talk to teens about this subject, the, the, the arguments for the existence of God, et cetera, et cetera. It's one of my, one of my fun things to do, with, especially with young people who try to tell me there is no God. Oh, I just love to talk to those kids. And I have who question God, existence. Adults, too. And, uh, but God doesn't need anything for his nature because he's complete. Did you know that if there was any place in any element at any time that God could not be complete, if there was any way that there could be any kind of a defect in God, then God could not be. That, that means that would not be God. That wouldn't be God because God is absolute perfection. Therefore, there cannot be anything less than absolute perfection. And if there can be an element that makes a person think he has imperfection, then that couldn't be God because God can't be imperfect. He can only be complete. God can only be complete. He can't have any flaw. He has no flaw. He cannot lie. He is not a liar. He's all truth. And the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So because he is complete, he doesn't need anything for his nature because it's complete. But what he does need us to do is to complete his mission. Not his nature. Not who he is but to complete his mission. Well, pastor, how do I do that? Here's how you do it. You go out of here today 
and you begin to drop the seeds. Drop the seeds. Let the seeds drop all over this county, all over wherever you go. A word spoken. Hey, can I pray for you, buddy? I, I can see you're struggling here at work today. If, some, if there's anything I can pray for, I'll pray for you, man. I have never yet been turned down when I've offered to. I, I, I tell the dialysis patients all the time. I introduce myself. I get to know them. And I ask their name, et cetera, and get their story a little bit. And, and I say, I'm going to pray for you. Well, thanks, man. I really appreciate that. Well, I've run into some Christians, too, that are getting dialysis. In fact, my, the, my partner beside me goes to our church since 1980-something, Eva. Goes, goes, been going to our church since back in the 80s, and she's sitting in the chair. We, we have good fellowship. We talk about the Lord, all kinds of stuff when, when we're processing. And we, you know, once we get going in the process, you have to be careful. You can't talk out loud to disturb anybody. But it, it, isn't God good that we can be praying for people that we know that are in great need? Folks, let's we start praying for them. And watch the doors open. Watch the doors open. Amen? If you're listening online today and you here today and you don't know the Lord, wow, know something. God is. He shows up. He's shown up right now to your heart. He's knocking on your door. All you have to do is turn the handle. If you look at that picture of Jesus standing at the door knocking, did you ever notice there's no handle on the outside of the door? You ever notice that picture? Take a good look next time. You won't see a handle on the outside of the door of a picture where you see that old, remember that picture you see Jesus standing at the door knocking? Well, you, you won't see on that door anymore. You won't, you won't see a knob on that door on the outside. It's because you have to open the door up on the inside and let Jesus in. So let Jesus in today by saying, Lord, I need you. I understand that I'm born into sin and I need you and I confess my sins to you and I invite you to my heart, Jesus. He'll come in your heart. He'll change your life, and you will learn three things. He is, he will show up in your life, and he will work in and through your life. Amen. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you, Jesus, today that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever, and that you neither slumber nor sleep. You are, you're here. You're among us. You're working in this country. You're doing some pretty awesome things. And if we're reading the scripture, we would see that. So make sure everyone is getting into the word, Lord. Amongst all the other medias that are out there, let's get into the media of your word. And we'll understand what's taking place in our world. And it will help us to get ready. And will help us to get others ready. And I pray for anyone today who opens their heart to receive that God. I know you will go in inside and live and dwell as the power of one. We love you, Father. We thank you and praise you. We give you all the glory and all the praise and all the honor. And all God's people pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you and we love you. Thank you so much. God bless you. Happy Victory New Year.